Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackHere.com. Today we're going to break down the all new HJC i71 full face helmet. The HJC i71 retails for $229 to $269. Solids to graphics. Please understand, we don't update the videos for pricing changes, only when the product itself has been completely redesigned. Who is this helmet right for? This helmet features a clear outer shield with a dark smoke drop down inner. So this was designed for street riders who are looking for the comfort and protection of a full face helmet with the convenience of a tinted screen that is available right at your fingertips with the simple slide of a switch to help you go from light to dark and everything in between. Looking at the HJC line itself, I would also say this helmet is right for a rider who wants to get premium features and benefits, but get it at a more affordable price. We just reviewed the ARFA 71. It's a higher end version of this. This sells for about half. And I got to tell you, it's pretty darn close. What's in the box when you get the helmet? Obviously the helmet's in the box. The clear outer shield is installed. The dark smoke drop down inner is installed as well as our chin curtain. The outer shield is pin lock ready. The insert is not included. You'll have to purchase that separately. Helmet fit. I measure 58 centimeters on the money with an intermediate oval head shape. Per the size chart, I'm in a medium. This is an intermediate oval shaped helmet. I got a good comfortable fit right out of the box. Really enjoy the way this helmet felt once I had it on. Helmet weight. This helmet weighs 3.75 pounds in a size medium. For reference, that was 0.15 pounds heavier than the ARFA 71 that sells for double the money. Still in line with what I would expect at this price point. Bluetooth compatibility. Like its big brother, the ARFA 71, this helmet is designed to accept the HJC Cena Partnership Bluetooth integration. There's two models available, the 50B and the 21B, the 50 being the higher end of the two. These side plates pop right off. The unit slides on, the battery's held back here. There's all this channeling for the speakers and the microphone and the wires. We're going to show you more about that in the second half of this video when we get it apart. But I got to tell you, it's a really clean integration. We're going to do an install video sometime in the month of February too to show you what it takes to get it done and what the end result itself is like. Let's say you want to use a universal model. A couple of different ways. Some offer the adhesive, right? You'd be able to stick it to that panel. Others that <coughs> use a clamp, you would have to install it a little further back here so you're out of the way of the switch and away from the additional bulk that these panels feature. Ventilation. That's something that's really important feature-wise to all of us. This helmet with the drop-down inner screen present some challenges for a helmet designer. When you have a drop-down inner screen, it needs to live inside the shell right about in this area here. That is blocking a premium space for helmet vents that would be right here in the brow. It's a great way to drive air in. So they have to get a little more creative with some channeling and using vents up here on the top of the crown. Intake vent here on the chin. It's gonna bring air up onto the shield as a demister. And then you have your extractor exhaust vent back here at the back. The amount of ventilation you're going to get from this is going to be reasonable, right? It's going to be enough to cool you down when it's really hot outside. It's not going to be on par with some of the high-end race helmets that are full of vents, especially up in this brow area, but it's going to be enough to get the job done. Shell construction. This uses an injection molded plastic shell. It is available in three different shell sizes, spread over six independent helmet sizes. Extra small and small share, medium and large share one, extra large and 2X are going to share the final one. 
This is certified to DOT standards here in the US, which is very common for street helmets, especially throughout the HJC line. Amount of noise this is going to produce. HJC has done things to mitigate the noise. One of the things is that you see the shape here on the shield. They've contoured that. That helps to break that up a little bit there, make it a little quieter. Also, I would say this helmet, when the chin curtain is installed and the contour of the cheek pads, it really seals up nice around the jawline and the neck, and that helps to keep it quieter. This is not a helmet that I would personally expect to ride in. Having ridden in and reviewed hundreds of helmets, I own hundreds of helmets, over many decades, I would expect the noise production from this, especially when it fits right, to be at a very reasonable level, especially given its price point. It would perform well. Glasses compatibility. They did a good job with this. They slide in, they ride in the channel, they land where you, you want them to be. For me, it was no issue. I think it's gonna be that way for most people. Okay, now let's cover the shield. Let's start off with the shield lock that's included. It's a little spring-loaded switch right here. You're able to do that with one hand on the left side, of course. Push in, lift up on the shield, it comes all the way up. Changing the shield. This is one of the more probably clunky, if you will, shield ratchet systems that I think that I've changed the shield on over the last several years at this point. What's really important is that it holds it on securely and it definitely appears to do that. There's multiple points of contact here, which is a bonus. You want it to stay and stay in place. You know, is this a big deal for most riders? I don't think so because you have a drop down inner screen that's tinted. Odds are the overwhelming majority of riders are just going to leave the clear outer on and never mess with it anyways. To remove it, you need to pull forward on this lock right here. And when you do that, I want you to to put more pressure here towards the top, right? And you're gonna hear an audible click once you have it released. And then kind of wiggle this around. There are a total of four tabs that need to be, come out of their positions. And as you can see, it's a little challenging. What I ultimately had to do to release the lower one, this one and the one in the back, they come out pretty easy. You gotta kind of tip the shield a little bit like that. It's gonna come out. Come to the other side, same thing. That one came out a little bit easier because you already had one side out. It's all spring loaded, helps to draw it back against the gasket. It's gonna get you a better seal, which is the most important part. Show you the different tabs that are located here on the shield itself. Now let's see if we can get this thing back on the helmet. What I found that works best is if you engage this lower tab first. So to do that, kind of dip it in right there. Kind of feel a little click. Then get the one in the rear, then get the one here in the front, the one in the center. Kind of goes in all by itself. Well, look at that. Maybe that's the secret. So start off with that lowermost tab. And once you have one side already kind of done up, you have to bend the shield a little bit, put a little pressure in on it. Before you ride, actuate the shield a couple of times to make sure that you've got it. Let's go ahead and pop that back off. And now I want to show you the three position adjustment that's available for that drop down inner. It's kind of cool. What it does, it allows you to change the position of the inner shield. There is the default position right there and move it further away from your face. And while it's moving further away from your face, it also is going to come down just a little bit further. The first thing that we have to do is remove the panel that would be used for Bluetooth, the direct fit Bluetooth installation. You push down on this little clip right here. This slides right off. We'll remove the one on the other side just to cover that now. Adjustment. There is a three position switch right here. Default 
is all the way down in the middle you're going to now notice right at the end there you see how it comes down it goes out and away from the face just a little bit and it seems to come down a little further let's go to the uppermost position it's definitely more pronounced here you can really see that so if you're finding that the position from the factory is not really where you want it you're going to have the flexibility to go ahead and adjust that interior removal this is something you'll need to do if you're going to do the install with one of the bluetooth devices to remove the cheek pads slide your fingers in between the backing of the cheek pad and the eps of the helmet pull towards the inside of the helmet there are three snaps one at the front of the cheek pad one at the top and then one at the rear once you have those snaps undone go ahead and grab your cheek pad up here on the front pull out rotating back and release repeat the process for the other side essentially just a mirror image the chin curtain it's a pretty large chin curtain that comes installed i found this thing is very difficult to remove with the cheek pads in so if you decide you're going to pull this out either expect to put a lot of pressure on it or you can make your life easier by removing the cheek pads first to remove the top pad there are two snaps here at the back you need to release up here in the brow there are tabs that you need to pull downward on and then pull out to release doesn't really take a lot of pressure out comes our top pad you look at the quality of the liner i mean especially for the price point of the helmet it's excellent feels really comfortable when you have it on there are little closeout panels that were installed from the factory for the bluetooth speakers very easily removable you can see the two tabs that are used to retain them they are marked right hand and left hand side and now we can give you a close-up look inside this helmet the gist of it is look at all the molded channels for the wiring for the bluetooth device to hold the speakers in place the microphone in the chin bar this is a proper street helmet that was made to accept the direct fit or a universal device and get you a super clean install that's going to be easy to use day in and day out with their HJC Cena model your whole pack will go back here the battery pack and then the controls on the left side if you buy the high-end unit the right side also has a antenna that mounts out here to better compatibility better communication take a look on the inside of the helmet here you can see the channeling that is included for ventilation this is definitely one area where when you compare this to its bigger brother the arfa 71 you can clearly see that they've done a little bit more to enhance the ventilation of the arfa 71 as compared to the i-71 there has to be some differences given the difference in price <coughs> overall what do i think i think at the price point you're getting a lot of features a lot of benefits the quality is excellent you have the option for that direct communicator integration it's going to be a, a sick package when you get it all done the helmet fit great it looks great a lot of cool graphics available if you have any questions leave those in the comments section of this video answer all that stuff myself i'm always here to help you choose the right helmet for your next drive